Safety Committee met last week, and um, based upon some research that I had done, I had recommended to the committee that we lower the speed on the bear up to 30 miles per hour. Um, with addition, uh, installation, installation of some LED signs that I had shown in the past, as well as increasing force and whatnot. So, um, sometime in the very near future, you're going to get a formal request from the Highway Safety Committee to have a public hearing probably prior to one of your regular meetings uh, to look at that issue. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Please. Oh, okay. I just, um, okay. Is lowering it to 30, would that increase, um, would that make a margin to increase fines, speeding ticket fines? Well, all fines go to the state. The town receives no money from fines whatsoever. No, I just mean well, as an incentive to not speed. Well, you know, we are a, a reasonable improvement a law in New Hampshire. It's not, we're not an absolute speed state, which means that someone could theoretically be doing 35 miles an hour in a close of 30 zone, and it's not illegal for them to be traveling at speed as long as we don't prove to do so. What's going to happen is by dropping the speed limit down to, from 35 to 30, where most people do 5 to 10 miles, sometimes 15 miles over the speed limit, you're going to reduce that an additional 5, 5 miles. So instead of doing 40, what they would normally be doing 50. So, uh, but what it is going to do, especially at the beginning, is going to increase the number of violators because the people who normally travel down that road between 30 and 45, now everyone is going to be speeding. So, so I think with the uh, with the signs that will be proposed in the very near future, as well as the enforcement, uh, it should have some impact out there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, fire. Uh, What's that? You want me to slide up? Yes. Of it. It's for uh, 
These are the for new safety vests, uh, the ones that we have on the equipment right now, and they just don't have reflectability anymore, so they're basically unsafe, and it's like everything else. Shelf life is what comes into play here. So we purchased 10 vests because basically everybody on the fire truck or whatever other crew we have out there needs to have a reflective vest. Especially when we're on our roof floor or whatnot like that. The ones we have now just don't have that good So um, we purchased some, and it's um, going to be a purchase order 1651. It's going to come out of our equipment line item. There's plenty of funding for 10 new seat vests. Um, we purchased order 1651 to Gail, Gail Tom. Gail Tom. Uh, $342.50 for 10 fire safety vests. All right. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? So, do you need more than 10? Yeah, yeah. that would have first go around. Basically, every yeah. seat, like engine two, the newest piece, very six vests. So, the six there, there's two been added to the community, but there's two that are on our utility. Because those were our first vehicles to take a lot of uh, traffic acts. Um, I still want to get five more for the back of payment okay. and a couple more for the Just because they will get to be all more darkness now than it was late in the day. So by our SOP, uh, when we're on fire or an accident or anything, we're out in, a, in an area where we want to protect ourselves safety wise. Uh, how long are we supposed to be there? So that's what I'm afraid of. Okay. unit first. Sounds good. I just had it. That was good. Good. Okay. All right. And um, so, do you? There's no discount in the quantity that you buy, right? Unfortunately, not. Yeah. Any questions? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. This is the other half that goes with that. Okay. And the second PO that I have today is 1650. And it's um, going to go with cut rate, cut rate batteries. And I have a list here of what we're going to purchase. This is coming from that new line item which we added last year after we did all the radio stuff. We're starting to uh, go back one step. The radio installations from the warm article are starting to arrive. We did in two today. One is tomorrow, and they're going to do some of the other equipment on Wednesday. So all of that is coming to fruition for what we've been uh, working towards. We added that line item into the budget last year under the uh, operating budget for some of the other needed portable radios which weren't going to come on the Warren article. There's some other equipment that we needed. But what we're going to do, you've been in the station, you've seen you all have. When you come by the fire truck, right outside the doors is a bank of radio chargers where all the radio, portable radios are sitting. So as the guys enter the truck, they put their accountability tag, get on the truck, they grab a radio, and they go. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade with the new radios and charging systems. Those radios that were outside the trucks are going to now be mounted inside the vehicles. So that once they're in, they're ready to go, because it's time when we go down the road, everybody got the radio, everybody ready to go, because So that's going to be eliminated. Plus, they're going to be inside working on the truck electrical system, so that when they take the radio out, we always have a bank of backup batteries. We'll have to go right in its place. So if we're on an extended period of time for any sort of incident, and we start losing battery power, we can replace that stuff. So I have a list here of what we're buying. There's uh, some single battery chargers and a group radio charger. So for the equipment we're looking to get right now, it's going to come out of that line of the radio equipment. $1,246.40. This will outfit uh, both engines so that we can have all the radio equipment swapped over once all the equipment and stuff are done. How does that affect the battery in the vehicle when it's charging all the time? Mm -hmm. When they're in the, when they're running, it's not a problem. Like I mean, the engines aren't running, but when they're sitting idle on the station. They're plugged in the shore lights, so they're actually operating. Okay, so it doesn't do anything to the battery. It doesn't do anything to the batteries or the engines. No, I know we just had that problem a little while ago with, the, with engine one because the battery's dry. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that's recurrent with that vehicle. Mm -hmm. But when they're in the station, plugged into their shoreline, it's basically running off the station supply. Okay. It doesn't even affect the uh, radio. Because they have a, a transformer so that when they're plugged in like that, mm -hmm. it bypasses that whole system. Okay. So once you have 
plug and fire out the truck and we've got away. Now we're working on the truck and okay. the internal stuff. Okay. okay? Yep. Good question. <laughs> I want a bunch of dead batteries on the seat. <laughs> We've had that problem. We pick them up, and you'd be well talking in five minutes, and it's beeping at you because the battery's dead. Yeah. So that's why we've been coming to the point where we just keep taking it. Keep taking it to that now. Okay. okay, I need to discuss purchase order number 1650 and uh, 124640 to Motorola Radio. Or no, to cut rate batteries. Cut rate batteries. For Motorola Radio. Okay. Second that. All right. Any further discussion or questions? Right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, you know, sometimes it's too weak, thing. this is where sometimes it gets, it gets a little bit back, it's not something here. You don't have to have it that way. If you have something in the corner, we can meet. I understood. Okay. I ain't going to make you already meet this for this time. I think okay. that's all I'm saying. Okay, Caroline, you've got a couple other little things you want to do. Okay. Okay. And you just put those on the table and you get both. I'll trade you. I'll okay. trade you. I'll give you the folder. I'll give you the folder. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Got it. Okay. Actually, I've got a couple more things. I actually have um, a couple new guys which want to step into the department. And this is all there. Look at that in color. That's really beautiful, thank you. The gentleman is over by this table over line. It's another guy from there that wants to change profession, so we're going to be in shop. So it's going to be a school of fall uh, where we can send a lot of folks, so we'll be able to do it. So that's those things. The one thing that I, other thing I just want to discuss with you, to keep you informed and in the loop, is I'm sure you read the paper here this morning that the New England Fire Chief passed away. Saturday. She's 33 years old. Cancer. She was going to a big deal for the whole profession. So, us as a fire department, they covered us when the assistant chief heard pass. So, they came up and covered us during some of our uh, time that we had to settle. So, we are going to Newington. Basically, they're going to have coverage from Thursday morning at 8 to Sunday morning at 8. From nine different towns. So they can go through the wake and go through the funeral services and whatnot and take care of the chief's needs and the family. So we're going to be the first piece that's going to be down there next Thursday morning. So, we're going to so you're aware, you know, I proved this, is that our fire truck with a crew of five guys is going to go down and be in Wheaton for eight hours. That's repayment for what they've done once. We're still going to have enough equipment down, we're still going to have enough guys in town, but it's kind of like one hand is helping out the other hand. So that's what As I said, the radio equipment is in, it's being installed, so we'll have a week or so and all that stuff up and running. So that's another big plus for us just to be able to do that. Great. Questions? All right. Thank you all. And I'll be down in Newington too, so. Because the other thing in Newington is your assistant chief has never really been in the chief or command position yet, so there. They're kind of floundering a little bit. So I'm like, you know, Chief O'Brien and a kidder. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. He stepped up in the front of so. He thinks he's in charge. And uh, some of the other chiefs are going to help him really get through this because he's a 33 year old guy. It's kind of going to be part of the problem. It's kind of, kind of difficult to be covered because they don't have a big structure. Mm -hmm. You know, even in our small town, our structure is a lot, uh, we've got a lot more area to absorb these kind of things than they do. So they need to help. So we're going to do it. Good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Um, highway. Do you want to wait until, can you wait until the end of the meeting? And we can, do you want to go through this whole thing before we do non public? Are you going to hang around? Probably. No? I can do it. Uh, here, sir. Uh, all right, we've got a few things. First of all, we gave the appeal to Captain Concrete for three thousand dollars, which I'm going to get back and cancel. Let's fly over. 
we come down there today, and instead of can't put it in a pad over the top, I got to see what was there. And we put three foot cover in there, and that should have made a lot of water cold stuff. We already got the hole done. Now the cover's already here. Yeah. 
town hall? Yeah, the town hall. Yeah. And then it, we're going to put a entry sign with an arrow facing that direction so they can get mm -hmm. the town hall. And I want to get six stop signs and six stop signs face it to be face the sign that we replace. Uh, mm -hmm. The PO's going up to 600. I'm not sure what the shipping will be for uh, Econo signs. Okay. Now, I'll move it. <laughs> uh, we'll move purchase order 1674 to the Econo signs for up to $600 for um, signs. Okay. All right. Discussion? Um, discounts or anything when, when you're buying signs? Because Bob's going to order signs too. Should we all order them all together? Those signs that he's going to be getting the sold up. Signs. Yeah. So I don't even know if it's going to be carried. Oh, okay. So okay. You know, we get this stuff more we buy, but it's yep. more, more of the same type. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just wanted to ask. All so right. how many more stops? We're going to that because they're cheaper. I mean, I, I get six more because damage from accidents, so, and mm -hmm. we get some that need to be refaced. Yep. So, I, so what I do is I put a new one up. Reface the one we have that we take down mm -hmm. and then have it for backup. It'll be close to like getting all the Yeah, I think that's I think okay. six will probably cover it, but I just uh, when we get them done we'll see if there's any other so awesome. Any other questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 So we won't be washing. Oh, no, no, you, you still be able to wash the vehicles. Okay. 
but you know, you, you won't be pressure washing. Uh, you know, they don't recommend okay. pressure washing. Oh, this is good. Yeah, because it will take. I'll take it off. Oh, I'll take it off. Yeah. Sure, yeah. But, you know, we want to pressure wash the body and stuff to get the salt off the body. But, mm -hmm. You know, and stuff like that. It's um, not underneath that. Right. That, 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 the more oil stays under there, the better it is. Is this the same kind of stuff in that place on um, one, uh, one, one twenty-five? Over by, um, I can't think of the name of that. It's a spray on the thing so with the flat out. Linux? Is that, is that no, it? Linux is a, no, so Linux that's for is the like a protective the, coating. For the bed. For the beds. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Which we did on the couple of weeks ago. Okay. okay. All right. It's blue grain and mineral oil. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's a smart idea. Um, and if you have money in, does it come from equipment? Like, no, I would be able to use it um, to, to get it in the budget. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously not obviously get that money. But, yeah, but it doesn't matter. You're at 2800 or 20000 yeah. yeah. Spent 2800 mm -hmm. So, um, how many trucks is it? You say all trucks, but how many is it? It would be the uh, pickup. It's a new one that's coming. The new one that's coming. If it gets one. here before December. It's okay. That'll be here before December. Right. And the it gets next. So there's four of them four total. Trucks, four dump trucks, correct. Okay. It won't. It's, like I said, small trucks, two. It's two, three hundred, then four hundred. I just, you know, in case you run into some slaking issue or something before you need that to trickle up. All those in favor say aye. 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 And how much is it? it up to fifteen hundred. So that actually works better if there's already rust on the frame. Yeah. Clean storage. Mm -hmm. Like they said, better to have it on there. Keep the salt out of it. Mm -hmm. We can extend the life of it for two or three years. Thank <laughs> you. 
ditch all the way around the back five mile. That is not property. It shouldn't be up to us to maintain that. Right. That's causing a lot of issues up on Boundary Street because it isn't maintained properly. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm always doing that. I know the pipe coming down through is our problem, which is causing a lot of that water to go down the vine. That's, you know, I can fix that. See, and get in there and see what we got. We can fix that pipe. But I don't know what we'll be able to do with it. Well, we just, you can give them their, your opinion of what needs to be done. He said, well, that's not the problem. The problem is the pipe that's coming behind the door. Once we it fix all works together. Yeah. You know? But once I mean, we fix that, that, and that may eliminate some of the water that's coming across it. I mean, we only lost the foundry sheet, I mean, which is no less on the foundry when it's So, uh, <coughs> I mean, you know, I still got to be placed in color in front of the going up the water to water on the stage. It sits high and the water's not getting through. It's probably down the road, right? Correct. Yeah. We have the gauges. Yep. Yep. So, we've got to change that. <laughs> Okay. Do you have any questions on it at all? No. No. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, so we have a contract, okay? So, clearly she got the blessing from her. Um, so everything is good, and this is yeah. just the last step, then okay. we should be good. Okay. Um, has an application happened? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's have a motion to accept the agreement. Sure. So I move we accept the agreement between the town of Rollins, Rachel Michelle Mears for um, planning services. Okay. Any discussion? Oh, none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone else? I'm sorry? Yes, um, um, we um, um, Why don't you come see me tomorrow and you can read it and see if you. Okay. I have room in one. Oh, you mean the, policy, the um, agreement? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Transfer station sticker request. Can we start? Yeah, 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 we can go in there. Um, that would be done. So this is a carryover from last week. I um, I would not anticipate that the boards had time to read the transfer station ordinance, but um, Jessica, a, a new um, a person, a new to town person, purchased um, apartment buildings in town. Um, they are requesting a transfer station sticker or some kind of access to the transfer station um, for when apartments turn over so that they can clean out those apartments. Um, well, so it's a different request. Similar conversation, different request. Um, this person is a property owner. so. We have a conflict in the regulations because the transfer station ordinance allows property owners to um, have a transfer station sticker or have some kind of access to the transfer station. Whereas um, our contract with Lamprey, Lamprey's contract with waste management says that all um, debris must come from Rollinsford. So um, a property owner who is not a resident um, would, would then have means to dispose of debris. So the board was kind of struggling with this conversation last week because then um, you, you don't have an enforcement mechanism to be sure that the debris is coming from Rollinsford. But further, the housing standard, uh, the housing standard regulations say that um, building apartment buildings of um, more than four units must have a dumpster, and they do have a dumpster. Right. So one of the options that was discussed is um, some kind of temporary measure. Um, the front office does have a template letter for, um, you know, one-time disposal or something that can be good for a finite amount of time. That didn't work so well the last time. And that's why someone was doing it for many years, right? Well, so so somebody got a letter that that was like good for a year at a time, and they had to come back to the board every year, and then and then the board said no. But um, I think that letter was misinterpreted, and, and um, yeah, we have to be careful. About well, but that's not on a temporary basis. That's my only point because I think it's sometimes people forget that they're out there. And well, I'm not sure that those letters have a specific time frame on them. It was yeah. just that they had a letter that allowed them to go to the transfer station. It expired. I think that was more of a procedural problem that there wasn't a lot of oversight with the expiration of a letter or, or there's no mechanism to, re to remind people to go back to the board and get a new letter for the following year. Mm -hmm. um, there, there were so few of those and I'm not sure that we have even more than one now. Right. That um, we don't have a good process to stay on top of those things. So, but but that I don't think was for a finite amount of time. I think that was just you know kind of an annual letter because they didn't. Um, I don't remember why, but the, the front office objected to putting a sticker on a non-resident plate, so the letter became an answer to that. Mm -hmm. 
if the argument is that they're going to be using it, maybe I'm just saying that they're going to be using the transfer station to dispose of debris that is generated through upgrades to their apartment building, could it be some sort of add-on to like a building permit? I do think that building permits could play a role in um, monitoring um, disposal of refuse at the, at the transfer station, but I think they were more interested in, not necessarily, the, I think they were more interested in mattresses and couches yeah. that were left by people. Oh. Yeah, people walk away and leave their property there and then they have to pay to have it disposed of, or have a place to put it. Do, do these to dispose of mattresses and stuff cover the full cost of disposal, or do we subsidize? That's not really clear. The intent is that the fees pay for the disposal, but without scales, there's no way to really know. Interesting. And we're talking, we were talking about scales yeah, at the last meeting. I was at the one that was saying those, yeah. Um, so it's definitely something that we're considering um, sooner than later if we can put it in and find it for money. Um, but um, I just, my biggest fear is we open the door any non-resident who owns apartment buildings in town. That's my own concern. Um, I just don't think we can deny the request if the ordinance says they are entitled to it. And we can put specific <coughs> parameters in a letter saying you can dispose of couches and mattresses. I think there's a, a way to control it. Can we get another different color sticker for a non-resident? I think you are um, sure, but you would, you would, I would still suggest that you have some kind of policy about what does this different sticker mean, and you have to make sure the transfer station attendants know to look out for what the different sticker, like that there is a different sticker and, and what it means. <laughs> Right, and so that why, that means to me that we need to get our transfer station manager in here and work with us on this, so they know what they can enforce and and do it properly. So, would you like me to request that he attend, and that way you can work out even like the idea of a temporary letter? Would that be you know so that you can talk about the enforceability of that? So, option? is a temporary letter then taken away once that is? Well, at the transfer station because if it isn't, it's no, it's no good. Well, it's 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 like anything else. You don't have a sticker, so they'll they'll call you on having no sticker, and then they'll show the letter, and the letter will have a date time frame, and then they either will or will not be within the date time frame. So if they, they're outside of the date, then they don't have a transfer station. The sticker they'll be asked to leave. Um, but if they're in that date range, then they can dispose of whatever the date. Is. So George has something. <laughs> Why couldn't that, if you issue that letter, call us and tell them one time they're coming in? But they want it more than one time. They want it for like... You let them get one every time they want it once. That's exactly. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. So, and then once... And you can and control it. Good for, yeah. So then you would have the, the letters on file at where the gentleman stands to take the payment for the product. We could do that. Have a binder or something. Copy up the letter. I'll collect the letter when they and yeah, they bring it to the Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's a single-use letter, they take the letter. Yeah, and then they can they can put and it. And we have a copy of that letter. Just so they they know that that's happening. And you know, I mean, it can't it won't be that much of an inconvenience. I mean, hopefully, it's not rising from apartments like on the month. You know what I mean? So it's only going to be when someone leaves. Correct. That was my that was understanding his, that of was the intent. intent. Yeah. yeah. So almost more of a voucher than you know, the letter, a voucher for so then it stands the reason if he wanted to get rid of a couch and the mattress on the same day and only had one truck, he'd need two vouchers, one to the next one the couch. Or maybe they would or a sticker. letter what it is. What's that? You know, you could go with a purchase a stick and bring it in. Like a like, like they do in the other towns. A, a tag that someone's with and go I mean someone's with you have to buy a sticker to get rid of your disposable thing like that. Well, yeah. 
signing. Well, and that is an approach that you have to buy such stickers at you know at the town hall, and you have to be qualified to buy the stickers. So if you go in for a letter, oh, I bet they control that. I think that speaks to a policy change. I mean, it is a policy change. Yeah. Right. I think regardless, you have a conflict, and and you ought to resolve the language of one thing or another so that. Um, the regulations are in agreement. So our reply to them is that we have to change our policies to reflect this change and that until then we can't do it, right? Well, that's up for the board to decide. And that, you know, so so until the, you know, so so the board will revise the language and it will say whatever the board decides mm -hmm. it'll say when you change mm -hmm. it. But but in the meantime is is up for discussion. Here we are in the meantime. So well, he can get a dumpster and put the stuff in the dumpster and have it removed and paid that way. That is an option, mm -hmm. but um, it doesn't really address, it doesn't address Miles's concern that the regulations allow for property owners to have some kind of access. My suggestion would be. To issue a one-time, you know, one-week or one-day permit or something, to, you know, be compliant with the regulation that says it's allowed, limit what they can bring to debris that's not something that would ordinarily fit in a dumpster, and, you know, one would hope that the board has um, changed the regulations, however you want to change them, by the time they need a new. They come, by the time they come back with another request. Well, is he asking because he has something to dispose of, or is he asking in general? Um, it was both. I, you know, they, they had just purchased it. I don't, you know, I don't. I, I have not heard a follow up. This was a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. now, so I don't know if they are not renting this apartment because it's full of whatever they need to dispose of. I, I don't know, um, but it they they did prefer the idea of having an annual sticker to a temporary pass. Sure. But who wouldn't? You know, yeah. yeah. I think we would give them a temporary pass and that they need to renew it every time they want to dispose of something. With the caveat that it can't fit in a dumpster. Bigger than what their dumpster will hold. Yeah, they have one of the smaller limits. Um, mm -hmm. It's not going to fit a mattress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but they understand they have to pay the disposal fee, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I think we need to work with the transfer station in making sure that they're informed when we issue out the temporary. And the temporary should have on there. Um, what they're disposing until we can get the other ordinance and these rules to um, be consistent. So, so who would who would issue that out? The front office. Okay. Um, we can change that if you want to change that. No, they are they are the ones who give it out, but just make sure that they have the detail and they, they, they I will work with them work to work with them to have some kind of form. They have a form, but I will work with them to make sure you, their form reflects what the board is saying. Okay. Right. So um, is this a one day pass? Is this a one week pass? Is it I I think years? it's a pass that allows them to bring a couch and a mattress. And that's it. And once it, they got the couch and the mattress, it gets retrieved and it's filed with the transfer station. I, I, I don't want it. I don't want an open end one. For sure. No. Okay. I mean, that's. I think that each time that they have it, we should be able to now that it just becomes a rule, then we should be able to give them one when they come down and ask for it. Okay. Or, or within 24 hours or whatever. But I don't think we should have an open end. But I think that's what that is. Yeah, I agree. It should be just for the situation and only that situation. Okay. So um, you all now have the transfer station ordinance. It was um, 
on the drive in archived folders, but um, I emailed it to you today so you can have a look at it. And um, I think if the board's going to revise it, have a look at it. And because it requires, it, it is an ordinance, so, so the change requires a public hearing, mm -hmm. that it would be prudent to look at all the ways in which you might want to revise it. Okay. Um, does Ed have a copy of that? Yes. He should have. Okay. So if he has any... Yeah, I emailed, I, I copied him on that. Okay. He so, knows it too. And he can give any suggestions on... Oh, for side. sure he would be yep. chiming okay. in. Okay. Yes. All right. And I spoke with him about that too. Okay. So do any of the items seem like totally off base as far as cost go, like sofa $25, sleeper sofa $35. Like I would think a sleeper sofa would be so much more than a sofa, but I don't really know. That's where the scales would come in. That's because it's weight for sure, yeah. and so that's definitely... That'd be fair for everybody, you're paying by weight. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So we're working on that. Great. Definitely try to get that in place. Um, so do we need a motion for that? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I move we authorize one time use letters to uh, person requested you know, non resident no, homeowners. Non resident homeowner. Yes. It's ever. It's yeah. not just that. Not just that, All right. Um, to disclose of loved, loved products or whatever. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? I think we have. All righty. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, I think we've done E already tonight. Yes? Yeah. There's, there's probably more to discuss, but no. Not tonight. No, tonight. All right. We'll leave it on the agenda, though, please. Okay. All right. Table uh, F. Table F. Okay. Yes. We'll get there. Um, board member activities and updates. Um, we had a uh, highway safety meeting last Thursday. Um, members or residents of Fairwood came to do their case that we do something. Um, I think lowering the speed limit makes a lot of sense there. Um, but like Bob said, he's going to come in with a, with a formal recommendation. We also talked about um, posting roads for the comments. Um, so both of those things require a public hearing. I plan on attending the Swim Water meeting on Wednesday. Um, and that is all I have this week. The planning board is meeting tomorrow night. There are um, three or four things on the agenda. It's going to be a busy night. Um, the Silver Street subdivision um, is on the agenda um, with some mild revisions. It's not clear whether or not they're going, um, whether they have everything in order um, for that um, to be voted as, as a complete application. Um, there's a lot line adjustment on um, Goodwin Road on the agenda. And then um, there's a non-conforming lot, um, a, a vacant non-conforming lot on Howe Road that is going to be going to the ZBA for, um, in hopes of building a single family home on it. And the first step in that process, which is this, in order to build anything on a, on a non-conforming lot, they need to go to the ZBA for a special exception. The first part of that process um, according to our regulations, is to start with the planning board for the planning board to determine that it's um, an adequate use for that site. So that is also on the agenda for tomorrow night. Um, last week, the Stormwater Committee met the annual report for our MS4 permit is due at the end of this month. Um, we're working on that. It's pretty much filled out. We have some little bits of odds and ends to um, tie up to make sure we're... Um, we're ready to go with that. Um, revenues. Chuck and I are working on revenues. Um, I will be, I hope, finishing that with him tomorrow and forwarding them on to the board. Um, 
revenue is what we've received to date, and then also um, what the board might consider to submit to the state for the revised estimated revenue report for 2019, based on the information of how much money we've received year to date, and then also based on that information, um, what the board might want to budget for revenue for 2020. So. Um, look out for that because how much we receive in revenue is um, very germane to how much you all might find affordable to spend. So um, we're working on that. Um, we got Office, thank you. Microsoft Office is installed and it's fantastic and more functional. The um, firewall router um, has come in and um, Tom should be in shortly to install it and that would be fantastic. It should improve our Wi-Fi um, upstairs and it will also um, get rid of a, a bug, a bit of a bug that the DMV computer has been experiencing um, because it hasn't had this um, firewall but it will also allow for the um, deputy town clerk to start doing registration from her computer as well. So. That's very exciting. Is that the D and D computer that the D and D paid for, or is it the one that we bought that's having the issues? Um, it's well, we replaced all the computers in the front office mm -hmm. this year, so they're all town computers now because the t the, the state stopped buying buying equipment oh. to support D and at all. So we don't have an active one that the D and D correct is dedicated, but we do have right. a dedicated one. He we we a have a dedicated one. computer okay. for for, DM, for registrations. Um, the only um, the only thing we have now that's state owned is the printer that's dying. That's um, that we have a purchase order to replace. That is um, no, she hasn't yet. No, the DMV printer. Um, I don't I don't know. Yes. Just the black one, not the colored one. Yes, but you know. Well, I, I, I don't have an answer to that, except that it might be a good thing that it hasn't happened yet, because in light of this um, new approach of allowing the deputy town clerk to also do registrations, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if the printer that was specified in the purchase order um, does networking in, in, in the way that those computers would have to be networked in order to share that computer, which is not to say that it's not workable or that it's not got the right specifications, but we need to check into that before we I, purchase I it. I thought I read something from them saying that they were going to have the old one connected to the deputy and the new one was going to be connected to the paper. That is something that they could do. Um, I'm not sure that there's a lot of advantage to that because I think they moved away from that idea, but um, I'm not sure there's a great advantage to that because the old printer was getting replaced because it was... Um, it was jamming because of the reduced product that they, the state supplies us to you. And right, so if it needs replacing, it needs replacing. So, you know... So I'm not sure that continuing to use it is really worthwhile and then you're buying toner cartridges for a couple hundred dollars for two different printers, mm -hmm. one of which is okay. not working so well. So um, so they can't be networked. Well, well let, let's let's okay. just hold on and, and see. And I, I, right now they are, um, it is being shared, so it is, which is different from networked. Um, it, so it's workable, it's just not ideal. Tom's working on it, but um, he hasn't had a chance yet to research whether the proposed printer is now the right printer. And I don't, I, you know, okay. I don't mean to be problematic because I don't want to suggest that it's not. We just don't know. Okay. Um, and I also intend to go to the Water Sewer District meeting on Wednesday night. Okay. Um, there's a non-public, and um, for for George, I also have a really brief non-public, um, the topic of which I um, sent in an email today. So, um, okay, so, All right, so um, we need to go into non-public? Well, depending on um, 
if, if George wants me to not be present for this, then maybe I can have, for his non-public, then maybe I can have three minutes because I don't think it requires a whole lot of discussion. I don't know. Do you want her here? here? Okay. Then, then he can go first and it's oh, fine. Okay. I'm here anyway, I'm here anyway. All right, so we're at the non-public. No, oh, no, no. We're not, we're not what? We need to review a correspondence. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, the red yeah. folder has a couple of um, cemetery deeds that need signing. Okay. Um, you just have to put on the record the deed, um, uh, burial deed number and... On the record, uh, deed burial lot number MT1903. Did I say the lot name? Yeah, who it's for. For consideration paid here by Grant to Lou and Ann Cheney of Winhaven in Florida. And deed number MT19-04, paid here by to Lori Boston of Prospect Street in Rollinsburg. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Discussion on these two deeds of burial lot purchases. No? no. Okay, so oh, we can't sign this unless it's in front of the town court. Witnessed. Oh, does okay. it have a witness? Yeah. That seems different. I don't remember doing that. I know, but it's my witness arrest that's on the house with him. Yeah, so it um, doesn't have to be notarized, I don't think, it just has to be witnessed by the town clerk of deputy, deputy town clerk. So what if so we leave them? We can leave them at the... All right, right, but if you would come in at your convenience, and at least you voted to approve them, so then you can okay. come in at your will and... And sign them from CPAC after the necessary going forward? I will, okay. because that's going to be a hindrance for sure. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have to sign that? Back of this as well? Looks like we do. I can't see anything. Who submits these? Is that the cemetery? Um, yes, he does them. I would say leave it blank and then talk to Andrea because she's, she administers these things oh, okay. um, on behalf of and in conjunction with the cemetery trustees. So since you're coming in anyway, um, We'll just leave them all blind. <coughs> and then you can, it looks like we may have to sign two places. I think you're signing in, you're clearly signing in two places, yep. but since there's a witness, I, I wouldn't want you to sign either one of them. Yep. All right. So let's have a motion to accept these two and then so, um, okay. so and then what we'll do is um, we will go in and sign them at the town hall. Okay. So all those in favor of accepting the two um, Lots being purchased, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, so let's put back in there and then we'll. Yep. Can you just check with him and then drop us an email with the thing that we have there? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, yep. And what about the green portion or anything? Items that we need to follow. I think this one that should be us. So. Oh, did we, um, did we get another, um, on the repainting of the foyer? Um, not yet, but okay. um, I've identified a vendor, so okay. I'm All right, so we're going to repaint it. It should be there. coming. Yeah, okay. All right, um, so community input. No? no? Okay. So we have a uh, non public RSA 91 A colon colon 3 2 for personnel highway. I move we go into non public for personnel. Second. Roll call. 